Okay, everyone, now it's time to become a little bit more formal. Because today is also the day that we are going to honor an honorary doctorate and to confer this honorary doctorate to Professor Jaap van Dissel. Now, the Board of Deans of Maastricht University, at the recommendation of its faculties and after consultation with the University Council, has decided to award an honorary doctorate to Professor Jaap van Dissel. And we're first going to watch a small video before we start with this ceremony. This year's honorary doctorate will be awarded to a scientist who has played a key role in the national public debate about the corona crisis in the Netherlands. Professor Dr. Jaap van Dissel, Director for the Center of Infectious Disease Control of the National Institute for Public Health and the Environment and Chairman of the Dutch Outbreak Management Team, has proved that science is not only a matter of research and publications, but that it has an active role in society. Jaap van Dissel obtained his doctorate at Leiden University and is a highly regarded expert in the field of infectious diseases in the Netherlands as well as internationally. He did a basic research fellowship at the Duke University Medical Center in Durham and the Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory in New York, where he worked in the field of advanced bacterial genetics. Currently, Van Dissel is director for the Center of Infectious Disease Control, as well as professor of internal medicine at the Leiden University Medical Center. His work during the COVID-19 pandemic focuses on a rational, practical, and methodical approach to the current health emergency but also on meticulously explaining the scientific foundation of the measures advised by the task force in layman's terms. In doing so, he has made clear that contemporary science requires a multitude of talents and skills like leadership and sharing knowledge and should not be limited to the academic context. This honorary doctorate serves as a recognition for Jaap van Dissel's work in the public domain and for being a prime example of a modern scientist. Professor Dr. Jaap van Dissel combined scientific work with an important role in a challenging time. The government leans strongly on the compass and beacon he provides in the control of the COVID-19 pandemic. And in this role, he reached a broad public with the scientific insights from the field of infectious disease control. Professor Jaap van Dissel showed an exceptional performance of authentic leadership and an authoritative representation of the science in society. And therefore, this honorary doctorate is very well deserved. And I'm truly grateful to serve as the promoter of this honorary doctorate. May I invite Professor Jaap van Dissel and Professor Christian Hube, whom the Board of Deans has appointed as his supervisor. And may I also invite Professor van Dissel's daughter to come on the stage to assist in this ceremony. Because as part of the bubble, the family bubble, you can come close to your father. Please come to the stage. So, Professor, you can go. Go ahead. Dear Professor van Dissel, dear Jaap, the mythical hero Odysseus faced many challenges on his journey to Ithaca, his safe harbor. His sailors were engaged in a battle with Polyphemus, the Cyclops, and he was caught in a foul storm sent by Poseidon. And he also had to cover his ears for the evil song of the sirens. And also your journey to Ithaca, Professor von Dissel, was and still is ridden with challenges. In the beginning of these historic times, you suddenly found yourself at the position responsible for breaking the pandemic waves. 
in a central role in the heart of the COVID-19 control. And the government leans strongly on the compass and beacon you provide. Your expert opinion was followed, your expert guidance. Although the unintentional handshake with Prime Minister Rutte, after announcing the farewell of handshaking, was the omen for the difficulty in changing the public's behavior. Science in the front line, nuance, uncertainty, and debate that is typical for scientific work had to compete with one-liners, with fake news and alleged certainty in talk shows. Challenging times when 17 million viral experts sing their siren song. And just as Odysseus, you probably had to put wax in your ears not to get distracted. As infectious disease experts, we never experienced so much daily attention for the scientific discipline of infectious disease control. Everybody now knows about transmission, about the reproductive number, or about source and contact tracing. And your knowledge transfer to society was impressive. Thanks to your regular technical briefings for the House of Representatives. And everybody admires you now for your clear and accessible public lectures, although it clearly happened in a political arena during times of elections, and questions asked by assertive politicians sometimes seem to resemble the struggle with the Cyclops. As one of the experts on board of the National Outbreak Management Crew, I experienced that you run a tight ship as captain on the helm. You managed meetings efficiently and effectively, which was quite a job, given the diverse characters on the crew, the diversity in stakes and positions, and the pressure at hand. When it was clear a proposition wouldn't make it, you trimmed your sail. But almost every week, you delivered direction while the ship sailed with only partial visibility. You endured and found a steadfast and steady course in the waves of the pandemic. And we still need you, as the stormy weather from Poseidon is not over yet, and Ithaca is still to be reached. Prime Minister Rutte named you himself in his first historic speech on national television. He said, the answer on all pending questions starts with the knowledge and experience of experts, experts like Jaap van Dissel and his colleagues inside and outside the RIVM. A quote to be proud of, although you might be reluctant towards personal honor. When praised by fellow colleagues about this honorary doctorate, you immediately shared the honor with them. Yet today, you may enjoy this praise. Dear Jaap, you have, ex you have shown exceptional performance of authentic leadership during a very challenging time, and you're a trustworthy representation of science in society, and therefore this honorary doctorate is very well deserved. Please rise. By the authority vested in me by law and in conformity with the decision of the Board of Deans, I hereby confer upon you, Professor von Dissel, the degree of Dr. Honoraris Causa and all the rights deriving therefrom by law and tradition. As evidence of this, I present to you the degree certificate signed by the Rector, the Dean of the Faculty of Health, Medicine and Life Sciences and myself and affixed with the great seal of the university. And on your shoulders will be put the kappa, which signifies the honor bestowed upon you.
Now, Professor von Dissel, I remember when I called you, which was somewhere in the beginning of the fall last year, when we were just, uh, well, since March, uh, living in this COVID pandemic, and I informed you that we were going to provide you with this honor. And I remember very well your answer. I'm not sure if you still remember. Well, no. you, you said, Miss Rector, are you sure? that you are going to do this, because what if I will receive lots of criticism in the coming period, because we are still looking for all the parts of this, this very uh, complex puzzle, mm. and what if then already you have uh, declared this honorary doctor, uh, doctorate to me? It might harm your institution. And from that moment, I heard already, of course, lots of uh, also good stories about your personality. Uh, we've already learned, of course, about your expertise and, and, and your leadership. But this is also showing uh, the kind of person you are, that you first think of the reputation of this institution because you don't know what will happen. And I remember also my answer. I said, that's part of science. So if critique Absolutely. will come, that is part of how we conduct science. Uh, so. All of us are still very much supportive of you uh, having this honor, and we are also very happy that you've accepted it. Yes. Now, I've promised also over lunch that I would ask you some tricky questions. Okay, I'm ready. You're ready, yeah? And uh, during lunch, it didn't really work to get the answers. <laughs> <laughs> well. But we also said, let's keep it for this moment. But I think the audience would love to hear from you what, for you, was the most remarkable moment in the last one and a half year. Okay, well, that's very easy now, because that's today, That's today! today. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Okay, besides today. <laughs> but I guess, well, you know, looking back at uh, one and a half year of uh, COVID, which basically are unprecedented times, also for the infectious disease community in the Netherlands, I think it's very much like our first lecture, actually, um, going outside your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a bit scary, it's challenging, it's always interesting, and... Um, leading the outbreak management team group, which is basically how the infectious disease community organizes itself in times of crisis mm -hmm. to advise to the government and the politicians and the public, uh, keeping the compass, that, that's really the reward and, and the most uh, challenging part of it. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking back to that with, with a lot of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure we did a lot of things not correct, but if we wouldn't have done so, we wouldn't have tried enough. So, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, I think the whole period is, is um, it has its highs and its lows, but on average, it's just like your previous lecture told yeah. us. It's, it's the disruptive character and, and coping with that and keeping the compass, as Christian told us. That's really what keep, keeps you going. Keeps you going. But maybe then, if I may ask, because from that lecture, what inspired me as well is that she mentioned that we should learn how to disagree. And when she said it, I immediately thought also of the work that you are doing in this last one and a half year, which also very much uh, infringes upon your personal life, having uh, all sorts of security measures, uh, because we apparently nowadays disagree in a very vocal, aggressive way, yeah. uh, which also shows the status of civilization, uh, I would say. How is that for you? Uh, your daughter was here on stage. Uh, that this, is, that this was something, of course, totally unexpected for you. That's true. It's, um, and it's not comforting, of course. I just hope that it goes away quite soon. Um, but on the other hand, I try to keep um, you know, my distance to this whole problem and leave it to the others and just do my work, which is uh, well, giving advice to the government, the politicians, uh, indirectly the public. And also uh, realizing, perhaps, that, that our work has shifted a lot. And obviously, in the beginning, uh, the politicians were very much focused on our findings. But, but now that we are uh, in a quite different wave and stage of the outbreak, uh, the, the, and the societal impact becomes evident. Now, I just want to stress that the OMT, the outbreak management team, only gives a very limited few of the outbreak. And we 
need to expand the scope of mm -hmm. advice. And um, so I, I think that uh, people that become angry at individual um, mm -hmm. members, um, I, I can really understand that because it had a lot of impact. But I think we should explain how it works and then, well, maybe the the dissentment is, is spread a little bit out. Mm -hmm. We'll yeah. see. And you hope that that part of the audience is also open to listen to that. Well, that's um, always that's what not you always hope as a rational person. Yeah. Now, um, you may know that with the Dutch universities, we are leading the uh, movement towards a different way of uh, recognizing and rewarding mm -hmm. achievements of our academic staff. And when we were discussing the honorary doctorate of, of that year, last year, you were for us the first that came to our mind, because you are also for us a role model of that whole movement. May I ask your view on that whole recognition and rewards program? Because you must have seen also some of the uh, critique that, that the movement is, is getting. Sure. Do you see yourself also as a, a role model for us? Well, I'm not sure I'm a role model for all different parts of science, but for infectious diseases, obviously, which is a disruptive um, event happening. Um, I, I think as infectious disease um, specialist and community, we're very much organized already from the very start. And I think that uh, the other scientific disciplines basically have to uh, think and, and go in the same way, uh, thinking what is the, the issue at stake for me personally as a scientist and how do we organize to be able to give advice to the government. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it may be a role model, but I, I hope it will, uh, you know, be used as a, as a model for other disciplines as well and to uh, join in with the advisory role, scientific advisory role mm -hmm. to the government, which, which is always as a, you know, trusted advisor or as an honest broker, mm -hmm. so to speak, an important part of, of uh, going in the right way with the Netherlands mm -hmm. and, yeah, and you, Europe. And you do that in, a, in an excellent way. Final question. Now, there was, used to be a time when you were a student, and um, mm. we are all opening the academic year also for our students. And when we were walking with the cortege to the theater, one student said, hey, that's that guy from television, and he was pointing at Professor von Dissel. Now, when you were a student, you probably never imagined you were going to be a VIP famous Dutch man in this regard that you are now. What kind of advice would you give to our students that are starting their lectures, they're very excited to be back in our buildings. What would be your advice to them? Okay, that's a difficult one. It's, um, it's not something that you try to do. It's, mm -hmm. um, I guess it comes along and then you can fill it in. And the best way to do it is to stay authentic yeah. and not try and you know, be someone else really. That's the only advice I can give. Yeah. Make, make, take your own talents and, uh, and use them. Use them. Thank you very much, Professor Van Dissel, our honorary doctorate of this year. Thank you.